Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18 Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Psalm 121 verses 7 to 8 The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. First message, text, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. You wouldn't show up for a half marathon wearing slippers or sandals or an ATV race with only a scooter. Or you wouldn't show up for a baseball game in your hockey gear 
or for a basketball game with a golf ball. <laughs> That's funny. So why do we often show up for life and prepare? Several years ago, I remember reading a story in Tony Donnie's book, Quiet Strength. He told the story of a disciplining to players who blew off a public service appearance at a local school because they felt like sleeping in. He addressed their level of responsibility in a team, only meeting, and thought the episode was over. Then five years later, while on a family vacation in Hong Kong, Dang Danji ran into one of his former players, now a husband, and a father. The young man brought up the story or of blowing off his responsibility and being coached up about how he should step up into being a man. The lesson had stopped because Denji coaches for life, not just for sports. Sometimes I think we approach spiritual stuff as if it's just for Sundays or just for church, like maybe the pieces of advice and coaching we receive throughout the Bible are just good advice or directions we can take or live others. Seriously, when's the last time you made some complicated to eat but ignored half of the instructions. Kung kisa ang gusto lang natin batunon ang luyag ta, kagang iban nga daw, hindi ta nanamian, daw i-reject natin ang advice or direction para sa atin. How did that sound? Too often, we think we can get by on our own and deal up the Christian-based resources of prayer and faith when we need it. Kung kinang lang tati, it take serious na ton, pero ko daw hindi ba ilang da. We're going to look at our lives as a competition for this week and today I want to focus on the tools of our sports, the equipment, the armor as Paul calls it, that's we're supposed to use to enter into the daily grind of life. Before we get to the equipment, the full armor of God, Paul tells the church at Ephesus to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. None of the pieces of equipment that follow are about us. They are all about the power of God. Romans chapter 13 verse 12 says, The might the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. I like that imagery. The armor of light, it glows, it shines, it reflects the power of God because Jesus is the light of the world. Friends, if you are wearing the armor of God, you shine. You shine. The armor of God is what we need to stand against the devil's kin. 
I do not usually talk about our battle with the devil. I think we're tempted and we struggle. And I admit that sometimes the struggle seems complicated. But Paul says that our struggle isn't just against someone else, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Wow! Paul seems pretty confident that what we've up against is more than powerful, more than complicated than just our temperaments, issues, addiction, family dynamics, suffering, sickness, and everything else. Sure, all of that is tough. But Paul says that we're really up against it because there is a spirit of evil and discontent. Call that original sin. Call it the devil. But Paul wants us to recognize that every day we're battling, we're competing, we're striving against things we can't even see. Paul says again to put on the full armor of God, not just speaking or and choosing the pieces we want. A little prayer here, a little light Bible study there, a couple of church visits a month. But to get all of the armor on, to put on all these things, not just the helmet or dusting off the shield, all of it. Most of us wouldn't set out for a hike without the right shoes or tennis shoes or the right or a night of camping without a tent and a lantern. But Paul wants us to take seriously what it looks like to be ready for battle, ready to compete. Paul reiterates that we should have on this armor so that when the day of evil comes, not if the day of evil comes, get this, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Lately, my nephew has been enamored with Netflix Daredevil miniseries. He tells me the story of a boy who is blinded, saving an old man's life, who grows up to be a superhero. His senses are strengthened because of his blindness, and he trains vigilantly to fight evildoers to protect the innocents, but he doesn't have super strength or some special healing power. He gets beaten up, he gets bones broken, but his dad was a boxer and he thought his son, Matt, that he was going to get knocked down and he was going to lose but he should always stand back up. Paul knows we're going to get knocked down. We're going to lose sometimes. We will draw our line in the sand and stand up for truth and justice, and we will still get knocked down. And Paul says, after everything, you must stand because you have the armor of God, the power of God behind you. Our purpose, the armor 
the purpose of this armor is to stand. Because when we stand, we exhibit faith in God's Christ in the face of everything against us. Friends, you don't have to win. You just have to stand. God will do the rest. So let's get to the actual armor. The first armor is the belt of truth. We need belts, right? They keep our pants from falling down. They keep our shirts tackled in. They are essentially for cosmetics and or social customs. Belts keep us put together. Now consider truth. Truth is the things that levels the playing field of life. We work hard to hide the truth sometimes about, say, our age, our weight, or our mistakes. But when the truth comes out, it can be freeing and it can diffuse situations where lies and deceit are running rampant. Truths like builds aren't necessarily the coolest part of our outfit, but without it, we'd be in trouble. The breastplate of righteousness. This is the second armor. The breastplate was the piece of armor that covered a shoulder's chest where many of the vital organs are. The breastplate of righteousness shoes off where the way were protected from evil by the death and resurrection of Jesus. We are not righteous on our own. But because we are clothed, harmed, protected by the sacrifice of Jesus, our vital organs are defended. Paul wrote in Romans 1.17, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And later in 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I have to admit, I've seen a baseball but not played any. I talked to a coach friend when I was in Houston, Texas many, many years ago. We watched games on television sometimes together to go Red Sox. The people facing the picture, most often the catcher and the umpire have their most serious equipment covering their chests and upper body. The sound of fastball makes hitting the padding sounds loud, very loud. I can only imagine what it would feel like taking a pitch to the chest or a foul tip with no padding. That's what sin would be like in our hearts if we didn't have the death and resurrection of Jesus. We can't earn the breastplate. But if we don't accept by faith that Jesus died for us on the cross and rose again, if we don't believe that, then we're left fully exposed regardless of what others parts of the armor we have on. The third armor, 
the feet feet with readiness from the gospel of peace. But not all of the armor is defensive. Paul puts that our feet should fit feet with readiness. Our shoes should be tied. I imagine it like the little wings on the feet of Herm, Herms, the symbol for speed on the ankles, sometimes the logo of cross-country team in the U.S. Paul says we should be ready to travel with the energy, with that energy, that speed, because we have the good news na ara sa atun ang maayo nga, ba, nga pulong sang Diyos ang kaluwasan ang pulong sang Diyos ang ginpangin matyan niya sa cross we should want the armor for ourselves but we should want it for everyone else too hindi lang para sa imo kag sa akon kundi para man sa imo abyan kag sa iban nga katawhan we should be motivated by the gospel of peace to the point that we are willing to do whatever it takes to share the good news sang maayong balita peace it can be so fleeting i think of the people who represent peace in my life the people i have emulated the people I want to be more like in the midst of culture that says we should fight back. One of my idol, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., is one of the people who comes to mind. The power of his story is conveyed pretty powerfully in Selma where Martin Luther King led protesters to march for the right to vote. It's hard to watch sometimes because you know what's going to happen from a historical perspective. But Martin Luther King taught his followers that the best way to convey their truth to promote peace was to not fight back but to stand to stay strong but not to fight evil with evil as martin luther king himself said darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that he cannot drive out hate or hate cannot drive out hate only love can do that the next armor is the shield of faith which extinguishes arrows of the evil one but while we're running while we're sharing we're going to take shots we're going to be fired on. I'm always impressed by those people who run into burning buildings or rush out to attend to the wounded during a war. Some carrying simply a plexiglass shield to protect themselves. They have to trust the shield. They have to believe that the shield itself will hold up and their fire because their focus has to be on the mission, on the person they're aiming to help or the job at hand. They need the shield to do its job. Faith works like that too. Have you ever felt like when you were on the verge of doing something good or maybe in response to a decision 
you made that was the right one. Suddenly, things seem to make the decision more difficult. More distractions, problems you don't see coming, things rise up to cause a problem. But if we hold on, if we have faith, if we stay focused, we can see that God has a plan and that God has not abandoned us. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. The next armor is the helmet of salvation. Just about every contact sports, except basketball, requires that you protect your head. Baseball, hockey, football. In football, you get a penalty if your helmet comes off before you leave the field. Our heads are important. Paul wants us to recognize that our faith, our hope, our love, our everything, it's all second to the salvation we have in the death and resurrection of Jesus. When we believe, I don't necessarily mention it as much as some, but do you know you're saved? Not in a guilt you into an altar call kind of way, but do you know in your heart that this is the way God loves you? Do you know that you have an eternal place in God's kingdom if you believed in Jesus Christ? It's pretty simple, and yet, we make it so complicated. Maybe this is the day that you can take serious thought about your salvation. Will you invite Jesus in your heart at this moment? The last is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Finally, we get an offensive weapon, right? I mean, from sword fighting to playing soldiers to cowboys versus Indians, everyone needs a weapon. I mean, I even got chased around by my nephew around the house with a lesser lesser gun toting four year old many weeks ago but the sword of the spirit isn't our weapon it's not even really a weapon if we think about it long enough it's the word of God for our inspiration and if we understand that the Word of God is really Jesus, the Word made flesh in John 1, the Word in which God spoke the world into being in Genesis 1, then the only good offense is to love, to be like Jesus. To know the Bible in a way that it comes to us when we're struggling. To grip us and hold our hearts. To comfort us and to support us and to protect us. Because indeed, He is our protector. And pray, Paul says, Pray with all kinds of prayers and requests. Paul says, be alert, wake up, he says, and keep praying. So I ask you, are you sook up 
na huluman ka bala? Do you know your spiritual equipment in a way that you're prepared for what the next moment brings? Do you know what tomorrow brings? Whatever circumstances that you are in, I don't. But where if we're submerged in truth, kung nahuluman kita sa kamatuuran, sa gugma, sa pagtuo, sa kalinong, then we'll be ready. We know that we are protected. Dear Father, we thank you for allowing us again today that your word can speak to us, that we may be able to meditate on it, and be able to be challenged by it, to be reminded by it, and be changed daily by the refreshing power of the Holy Spirit through your word. Continue, Lord, to make us the kind of person you want us to become. Keep us safe in the hollow of your hands, including our families. Make us feel your nearness and your protection daily in our lives. We trust this. In Jesus' name, amen.